In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and perform mechanical cervical traction. But before we start talking about this device right here, I'm going to give you a little tip. So right here you see a pad made out of yoga mat material that's sitting on the treatment table. What we typically do at our clinic is we actually put this underneath the traction device, so between the traction device and the surface, like the treatment table. And this is because on some surfaces the traction device can actually slide, and we don't want that to happen. We want the traction device to sit still on the table. And so this thing really provides some friction that prevents movement of the traction device. If you don't have this problem, don't worry about it, but if you do have this problem, consider putting a pad between the table and the traction device. And so here is the mechanical cervical traction device. There is a separate device for the lumbar spine, and you can actually use that one for the thoracic spine as well, but it's a little more difficult. It's much better suited for the lumbar spine. We'll be talking about that in a separate video. Now for the cervical traction device, the person is going to be positioned in supine, so they'll be laying on their back, and their head is going to be positioned right here on this pad. That means their neck is going to be between these two black neck pieces, and then they'll just be laying long ways on the table. These little gauges right here allow you to tighten the neck pieces, so initially you'll start with them loose, and then you'll tighten them once the person's head is in here. I'll show you that in just a minute. And the neck pieces move closer together and create a snug fit around the person's neck. There's also a Velcro strap, which you don't see right here, but it basically will wrap around the person's forehead, loop through this thing right here, and then loop back and Velcro on. And then right here is the pressure gauge. So eventually, once the person's in the traction device, basically start pumping that up and increase the traction. Now, one other note here on the pressure or the force that's being used for the traction. So when I was in classes, and you might have had a similar experience, when we talked about traction, we were given this table of values. The values were forces, and maybe one was 15 pounds, one was 20 pounds, 30, etc. And each force was apparently specific for a slightly different pathology. Maybe one of those pathologies was a disc protrusion. Maybe one was just simple arthritis. Maybe one was a radiculopathy, etc., etc. And you know, you would use 20 pounds for this, 30 pounds for that, and so forth. I've found, and probably most people have found, that in clinical practice, you don't really need to worry about that table so much. It might be necessary to learn for the test, but generally speaking, if we use anywhere between 20 and 30 pounds of force, we tend to get really good results. And I'm really curious to see what you guys think in the comments of the video. But generally speaking, I wouldn't worry about that table so much. We usually just do a target of 20 to 30 pounds of force, always starting with on the lower end when a person's using this for the first time. So once you have the mechanical cervical traction device in position, you're then going to loosen the neck pieces by rotating that knob. Again, you're doing that so the person can lay down and get their neck in between those neck pieces before you tighten it back up. Then you're going to adjust the neck flexion angle. Now this setting right here, which is the lowest neck flexion angle, is gonna be used for individuals with a normal degree of thoracic kyphosis, or if that thoracic kyphosis is actually diminished. You will rarely ever see diminished thoracic kyphosis, but if somebody did have that, that's where you would probably use this setting. Also, just normal or average head posturing or cervical hypolordosis, which is the opposite of forward head posturing. Again, very rarely you're gonna run into that. So pretty much for this setting and the one below it, these ones are gonna be used when the person has a normal degree of thoracic kyphosis and normal head posturing. The lowest setting right here gives you the greatest neck flexion angle, so the head will be higher up once you adjust the machine. This is best used when a person has some degree of forward head posturing or if they have thoracic hyperkyphosis. And that's because when a person with those conditions lays on their back in supine, uh, their head's going to already tend to be up a little bit because of that increased curvature of the thoracic spine. So you want to make sure that this is appropriate for the neck, right? not the thoracic spine. So if the person has thoracic hyperkyphosis, we need to bring this thing down, which will raise the platform up okay? and increase the neck flexion angle. At this point, the person lays down in the traction device, as you see right here. Then we're gonna take that Velcro strap, we're gonna wrap it around the person's forehead, loop it through the hole that I showed you on the side of the device, and then fasten it securely. Once we have that in place, we can then take those knobs and tighten those neck pieces. 
and we want to make sure that they're as tight as possible without causing any pain or discomfort and that's because if they're not tight enough the machine won't be able to apply traction as effectively. And now it's time to apply the traction. So you're going to use the pump to increase the force of the traction and you can monitor that force on the gauge that's attached to the side of the pump. Now the very first time that we give somebody mechanical cervical traction, what we're typically going to use is about 20 pounds of force. I mentioned earlier that you can use anywhere between 20 and 30 and potentially even more if they have tolerance, but the first time we always start off conservatively at the low end, about 20 pounds, and we assess patient tolerance that way. And then in terms of the dosing, we'll usually do two sets of three minute static holds separated by a one minute rest break. So what does that look like? Well, we pump it up to 20 pounds, let's say, and we just hold it there for three minutes. So just an easy static hold. Then we use the release setting on the gauge to take the traction all the way off and give the person about a one minute rest break. Then after that minute, we pump it back up to either the same force from before or if they have good tolerance, a little bit more, so maybe 25 pounds of force, and again hold that for three minutes. And make sure that when you do cervical traction, you do pre and post checks. So you do the test, treat, retest model. What are you looking for for the test and the retest? Well, it could be subjective measures. Maybe it's neck pain. Maybe it's sensory disturbances in one of, or both of the arms, like numbness, tingling, shooting pain. We would know that the traction worked if you took those subjective measurements before and after and the person's pain was decreased, or they had less numbness or less tingling or less shooting pain going down the arms, right? If it's affecting the person's strength, like maybe the grip, you could take a grip strength measurement before and after the traction. And sometimes you can even do it during the traction. Sometimes literally relieving that compression on nerve roots uh, can actually improve the person's grip strength during the treatment. So make sure you always follow the test, treat, retest model. Hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of how to set up and apply mechanical cervical traction. Thank you. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.